This is not exactly what the uh, 23rd of October is supposed to look like in Iowa. Just for your information, in case you didn't know. It is just about over the road there. Wow. Hey there, thanks for turning down my road. If this is your first time here, my name's Carl. My little brother and I both work for local farmers full time, but we both also farm together with our cattle herd and our hay operation. Everybody's involved, from the smallest to the biggest. If you don't have the joy of farming yourself, I'd love to help you experience it through this channel. Whatever your background, you found the right place. This is Dodge Brothers Farm and Ranch. Well, the sun's out, but don't let that fool you. It is wet. We got between three and five inches of rain, depending on where you are. Some people up north of us got six to seven inches of rain. Not exactly what we wanted, but we are well into harvest. We're doing really well. We're gonna get done in a timely fashion. We're not ready to go out there and make big ruts and tracks and mud it up and make a huge mess. We're gonna take a few days off and let the ground dry up and get back into shape for harvest. What this does for me is it gives me a chance to sit down and get some editing done so you guys can see some videos. I have a ton of footage stored up that I just haven't had time to edit. Normally, we get the dryer filled up early in the day and I'll be home at night or I'll be sitting in the grain cart for long periods of time and that's another place I get some of my editing done. But this year, the corn's been pretty dry. We've been able to run good long days well after dark and by the time I get home, I'm shot. I fall asleep in the chair working on it. So I'm gonna get a chance to sit down here and get some of these videos put together. Today, we're gonna talk about the bean roller. Did it work? Did it not work? Let's see. Howdy, everybody. We are cutting beans today. The beans are doing pretty well, but the most exciting part is we are working on the field that I used the roller on 50% of it and I did not use the roller on the other 50%. If you don't know what I'm talking about, earlier this spring, right after we planted the beans, I rented a bean roller from one of the neighbors, pulled it over here and ran it over half of this field. Actually, I divided the field into four sections. The north quarter I rolled, the next quarter I didn't roll, the next quarter I did roll, and the next quarter I didn't roll. I think I just got that backwards, but you understand the point. What we're wanting to find out is, do you get a yield advantage out of running the bean roller after you plant beans? I've heard it said that you can pick up two to three to four bushels. If that's true, renting the bean roller for $3 an acre is a no-brainer. It's a really good idea. The reason I got it this spring was because we had some problems with the planter getting it to close the furrow after the beans were dropped in. Some of the furrows had cracked back open and I was afraid that if we did not get a timely rain, we would have some problems with beans coming out of the ground and beans not coming out of the ground in those areas where the furrow opened back up. So I got that bean roller in hopes that I could close the furrows back up with the roller. Other benefits of running a bean roller are just smoothing the ground out so the combine can shave the beans down closer to the ground. It also pushes the small rocks down into the ground that are laying right up on top and prevents you from damaging your sickle bar on your bean header. Now, obviously it looks nice to have it all rolled smooth and flat. It looks really pretty from the road. We're gonna get out and take a look at how the combine did at cutting beans close to the ground, getting those last pods at the bottom on the rolled ground versus the non-rolled ground. And ultimately, we need to do a yield check because what it comes down to is dollars and cents. If it doesn't make you any more dollars, it doesn't make sense. Let's go take a look outside. So right now we're standing right on the line between not rolled and rolled. Let's get down and take a look at the corn stalks. Okay, taking a look at the non-rolled side, you can see this root ball here still semi-attached to the ground. This one back here is completely attached to the ground, almost entirely intact yet, a big root ball, and the stalk's still hanging on. We get over on the side that we did run the roller, you can see that the stalks are much more damaged. A lot of them are not even attached to the root ball anymore. They're broken off. The ones that are attached have a very, very small root ball, and most of the root ball is actually gone and completely decomposed and degraded by now. And like I say, the stalks are laying very flat. So if we get down here and take a look at the job that the bean header was doing, slicing the bottom pods off, 
right next to the ground. You can see where we did not run the roller here. There are still some beans left out in the field. Let's grab one here and take a look. This one has three full pods completely intact left on the plant. If you did that every time going across the field, you're definitely leaving bushels unharvested. We kind of scrape around and look, you can just see pods kind of hanging everywhere. Two, three pods on each plant. Anyway, these pods have beans inside them. So folks, we are leaving beans in the field. If we get over here and get down on the ground where we did run the roller, you can see that the header was able to cut a lot closer to the ground, very close to the ground. There are very few pods. I haven't really found more than one yet. These beans are just sliced off really low. You look at these uh, bean stalks and look at this, just nothing left out there unharvested. And now here comes the combine. This is gonna be the last split between the last fourth of the field that was rolled and not rolled. As you look on the right side here, you can see where we didn't run that roller. The stalks are standing just like soldiers. There's a lot of material left here. They're hooked into the ground really well. The root ball is still well maintained under the surface of the ground. You get over here where we did run it, you can just see they are laid flat and completely destroyed. So it will be interesting to see once we get all of these side-by-side -side trials done what the yield data is. Okay, now that we're back in the office and we got all the data at our fingertips, let's do a little analysis and see how we did with that bean roller. One of the really cool things we can do here is we can select an individual combine pass and compare it to the next pass. So if we go here and create a field region, select passes, and I wanna select this pass right here, and we're gonna see what the yield was on that pass. Okay, that was 48.3. And that was a non-rolled pass. Now if we go and select a new pass and go up here and select the rolled pass, oops, here's the rolled pass, 52.4 bushels per acre. Those two passes were side by side. You can't say that the dirt was all that different, but the yield was 4.1 bushels better per acre 
on the rolled beans versus the non-rolled beans. Okay, so then we'll go down here to where we rolled down here. This is non-rolled, 56 bushels to the acre. This is, oops, this is rolled, 58.8. So if we go select this, oops, select this pass alone, 57.8. Then select this pass, 57.5. Virtually no difference at all up there on the really good ground. Another way we can analyze this with field view cab is rather than selecting an individual pass, I can create a region freehand. So I know where that marker is right there. So I can just draw around here and it'll create its own region so that's a fourth of the field, and it's gonna take a while, 58.7. Okay, then I can just keep doing the same thing, moving on down. Fifty one. Fifty six. So that was just a very quick demonstration of how you can draw your own freehand regions. I went back and did it very intricately exactly where the rolled and non rolled beans were. And on a field average, the rolled beans outperformed the non rolled beans by only 1.4 bushels per acre. Now, with beans being valued at nine to $10 per bushel and the bean roller only costing $3 per acre to rent, it's still a no brainer. Even when you figure in the usage of your own tractor and your own time and your own diesel fuel, it's still paid off. But what I found really interesting, this field has a very different layout, hills, valleys, different types of dirt on each quadrant. So even though the field average was only 1.5 bushels better. Most of the side-by-side -side comparisons in very similar dirt turned out better than that. There was one that was no statistical difference, but then the other one was 4.2 bushels better, and the other one was almost six bushels better. One pass right to the next in the same area of the field. That is a lot of return on your investment. Now, is this what's gonna happen every year if you roll your beans? Absolutely not. Um, trying to think of what may have accounted for the extreme uh, bang for your buck this year on the roller. It might have been the fact that the furrows weren't getting closed with the planter, even though I had as much downforce on the closing wheels as I could. We may need to look at a different style of closing wheel for no-tilling beans. The two rubber wheels just can't quite always get the furrow closed. The bean roller did a great job helping with that. And also, we were able to cut the bottom pods off the plants where we had ran the roller and we were not able to do it where we hadn't run the roller. There were some of those pods that got away from us. We just weren't able to cut that close to the ground where it wasn't smoothed out with the roller. Anyhow, I found this to be a fascinating trial. I'm excited to try it again. We'll see how it works next year. I don't know if we'll roll all the acres or if we'll do some side-by-side -side trials again, but this year it definitely, definitely paid off. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll stay tuned for the next few harvest videos I'll be putting out. Thanks for riding along, and I'll see you next time.